If you're frustrated with the lack of leadership from the Biden administration, there is a former Democratic aide who has some news for you. It's really not a Biden problem, it's not a Democratic leadership problem, it's a you problem. Here's Paul Begala explaining what he means. The words of the daughter in law of Martin Luther King Jr. Andrea Waters King, this is what she told Politico, quote, what we have seen with President Biden is what happens when he puts the full force and power behind an issue like infrastructure. What we want to see is that same power and passion being put behind voting rights. Do you think that's fair criticism? Did President Biden put more effort into getting infrastructure passed, for example? Well, he he got infrastructure passed and that's a good thing because success can can breed success. He is putting the full force of the presidency behind it. I think the problem for the Democrats right now is, is not that they have bad leaders, they have bad followers. Now, when I heard that statement, I was under the assumption that Paul Begala was talking about other Democratic lawmakers, those who are not in positions of leadership, individuals like Senator Joe Manchin or Senator Kirsten Sinema. They're Democratic senators who have stood in the way of the passage of various elements of Biden's agenda, including $15 minimum wage, the social spending package, otherwise known as Build Back Better. But no, that is not what Paul Begala is talking about. He's talking about people like us. Let's watch what he means. I read the most amazing essay today from Andy Young. Andy is former mayor of Atlanta, former UN ambassador, and more importantly, probably the closest confidant and aide to Dr. King. He told the story. December of 1964, Andy Young and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. go to see Lyndon Johnson to push him for a Voting Rights Act. Johnson says, I can't do it. I, I used all my power to get the Civil Rights Act done last year. I don't have the power to push Congress any further on voting rights. As they left the White House, Andy Young's words, he said, I asked softly, I asked Dr. King what he thought. He said, I think we gotta go get the president some power. And so you know what they did, they organized, these are Andy Young's word. We mobilized the churches, the universities, the labor unions, the business community, a coalition of people of goodwill. In other words, those of mm -hmm. us who want to save voting rights, we need to get to work. I do think Biden is putting everything behind this, but he needs, he needs better followers. So he needs all of us in the game as well. Jenk, there's so much to unpack from the statement that we just heard. But I do want to remind you all of the fact that the very people who put in the work, they engaged in the ground game in Georgia to get the two Democratic senators elected in the senatorial runoff races. They worked really, really hard to ensure that they would get out the vote to get Biden elected in Georgia. Those very people, okay, those organizers, those activists, they're the ones who boycotted Biden's speech in Atlanta in regard to voting rights because they felt that Biden had neglected the issue that they had worked so hard to rally support for. And you know what happened immediately after that? Simone Sanders, who was working for Kamala Harris up until very recently, now she's working at cable news, she's got a hosting gig there. She totally minimized those very activists, those very individuals who put in the work to ensure that Democrats held all the levers of power in, in Congress, in the executive branch. I mean, the, the notion that the organizers, that the activists are the ones to blame here, that they haven't done enough is just ridiculous and enables the pathetic weakness that we've seen from the Biden administration. And no, I'm not buying for a second that Biden has done everything he could possibly do to ensure the passage of a voting rights bill or the passage of his own social spending bill. He has not, and I'll make my case in just a minute, but. Before I get into that rant, Cenk, jump in. Yeah, so look, these statements by Begala are deeply offensive, deeply misleading, and deeply stupid. So let me break down exactly why on every one of those counts. First of all, understand who he's attacking. He's attacking those exact civil rights leaders that Anna mentioned, They're the ones that sat out the Biden speech. He's basically telling them, remember MLK worked with Lyndon Johnson and got him more votes, so you better know your role. Shut up civil rights leaders, he's saying, and go and just get us more votes like we told you to. It is incredibly offensive, it's sick. Yep. And by the way, think about the hypocrisy here. 
when they got the same African American votes in uh, in Democratic primaries at the presidential level in South Carolina and the South. They would say, progressives, you better not complain. Those are black voters. You better not insult them. Now they're saying, oh, we don't have to give you voting rights. No black voters, black faith leaders, black civil rights leaders. You're the problem. Begala says, oh my God, that's so hypocritical. Now all of a sudden, apparently it's fair game to attack black voters and black leaders. They're the world's largest hypocrites. Now, why is it misleading? Are you kidding me? Have you read any history? But is not that stupid. Come on. Right. You don't know that Martin Luther King kicked Lyndon Johnson's ass up and down Pennsylvania Avenue. That he just, that Lyndon Johnson was scared to death of Martin Luther King and how he's going to either rally people for him or against him. You never read that Martin Luther King threatened Lyndon Johnson politically? No, but he he was tough as nails against Lyndon Johnson, tough as nails. Now to pretend that MLK was soft and all he did was serve Johnson, right? That is so misleading and incredibly offensive. Right, and and look, the other thing I want to add is to compare Biden to LBJ is the most laughable thing. I think probably one of the dumbest things I've heard on cable news. LBJ and Biden are not the same in any way, shape or form. They're very different. You know why? Because LBJ was willing to use carrots, which Biden is definitely willing to use, and sticks. LBJ <laughs> was honestly like ready and willing to intimidate members of his own party, even go so far as to coerce them <laughs> to ensure the passage of the civil rights bill. Okay, LBJ was not some friendly, nice like Roger, what's the name of that guy? Mr. Rogers type of guy, okay, he he was willing to use punishment against members of their of his own party if they were unwilling to play ball. That is not the case with Biden and I wanna give you specific examples. I know that I've talked about this before, but I wanna get more specific about what I mean. So remember, I talk about how Joe Manchin and his family gets all sorts of favors from the Biden administration, even as Senator Manchin serves as a massive obstacle in the passage of Biden's alleged agenda. I say alleged because at this point, I don't even know if Biden really cares about his own agenda or really cared about the passage of his own agenda. But here is a headline from the Associated Press. This is March 26th of 2021. Biden taps Senator Manchin's wife to co-chair Appalachian Board. Okay, so this is a position that Manchin's wife desperately wanted. She was tapped for that position, Biden gave it to her. And was this something that happened before or after Manchin was already serving as an obstacle? Well, let's let's read from the body of that piece. President Joe Biden is nominating Gail Manchin, the wife of West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin to be the co-chair of the Appalachian Regional Commission an economic development partnership involving the federal government and 13 states. Oh, How nice, in the same article it says, Joe Manchin is a critical part of the slim democratic majority in the Senate, influencing what parts of Biden's agenda can be passed. He has come out against, against a $15 an hour minimum wage and ending the filibuster. So Manchin was already on the record letting Biden know I am gonna stand in the way of your agenda. And what did Biden do? Oh, Let me reward you by giving your wife the, the job that she wants. Okay, how nice, what kind of sticks were implemented here? You know, what kind of uh, political punishment took place? If Biden really wanted the passage of a voting rights bill, did he implement anything that would actually apply real pressure to either Joe Manchin or Kirsten Cinema? Of course not. In fact, he continued to be incredibly complimentary toward both of them. He had said about Manchin, this is in October of 2021, not too long ago, a few months ago. The president said Manchin was quote, not a bad guy, not a bad guy. This is October of 2021, but if that doesn't infuriate you, Here's a statement from Joe Biden during an October town hall on CNN. Let's watch. A lot of Democrats in the House and Senate who are confused about where Senator Senator Sinema actually stands on things. 
And I know she's been negotiating directly with you and the White House. What is your read on her? And I, obviously, you need her uh, to remain positive in your direction, so I don't know what you're going to say. But what is your read no, on her? Do, do you know where she stands? First of all, she's smart as the devil, number one. Number two, she's very supportive of the environmental agenda in my legislation. Very supportive. She's supportive of, all, of almost all the things I mentioned relating to everything from a family care to all, to all those issues. Oh, is she? Why is he doing positive PR for cinema? Why are you saying that she's supportive of the environmental agenda when she's standing in the way of the passage of your environmental agenda? Why are you doing positive PR for her? This is October of 2021. This wasn't at the very beginning of the Biden presidency. This isn't, you know, this is after months and months of Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin standing in the way of important legislation passing in the Senate. But no, do positive PR for her, uh, paint her as this warrior for you know climate action, when in reality, she has only served as an obstacle. It's ridiculous, Biden is a joke. Come on, guys, I, I know our audience is on board, they know they're not stupid. But the blue check mark Democrats on Twitter are completely delusional about the weakness that we're seeing from the Biden administration right now. Go ahead, go ahead and tweet me, go ahead and cry about it, get all the K Hive people to whine about it. You know it's the truth, they've completely abandoned the very people who did the groundwork necessary to get Get his to get him elected. That's just the yeah. fact of the matter. Period. There, there's two layers here. Uh, one is Biden is pathetically weak, and anyone whose objective would see that. We want his agenda. We're trying to pass his so-called agenda. We're trying to help. We actually want you to pass things. But this whole all carrots, no sticks. It's useless. It's oh, oh yeah, I'll give you everything, Joe. Oh, you said I'll kiss your ass, Manchin. I'll kiss your ass. I'll grovel to you. Is it working? Is it working? No. All they ever do is slap you across the face, and all you say, Biden, is thank you, sir. May I have another? He's never criticized Joe Manchin. You don't know politics that it's carrots and sticks. No, no, no. Joe Biden is Joe Manchin. He's just using him. He doesn't believe in any of his so-called agenda. But now, okay, but we knew all that. This turn by Begala, and now, by the way, this is a talking point you will see going forward. You will see corporate Democrats, establishment Democrats, blaming the voters over and over again. They haven't even lost yet, and they're already blaming you guys. So Begala is now saying, no, it's not Biden's fault, it's your fault. It's you, the Democratic voters, who we have so much disdain for, now will yell at you and say, how dare you question us? Of, of course we didn't pass anything. That's because it's your fault. You should have given us a bigger majority. Well, we gave you a bigger majority uh, under Obama. You had a super majority. What'd you do with it? You passed Romney Care. You didn't do anything on minimum wage, on any of the economic issues. Why? Because you're corrupt. And now you've got people parroting these talking points. Oh, it's the voters' fault. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's let's attack our own voters. So that leads me to why it's deeply stupid. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you're a moderate Democrat and you think, oh yeah, I hate our own voters. If our own voters were more subservient and just groveled at Biden's feet and threw carrots at Manchin, oh my God, then we would win. It would just get more Democratic ass. We would win. Okay, I don't care if you're in that camp. You're wrong. You're foolish. It's all right. You're allowed to have your opinion, okay? But you're missing it. It's not going to work. You think insulting your own voters is gonna motivate them to show up and vote for you? You're nuts. You live in a bubble of elites and establishment where you think, oh yeah, man, just kick the voter and they'll do it. <laughs> just serve the donors, give them everything you want and spit on the voters. I've never heard a dumber political strategy in my life. You can guarantee, if they continue down this path, guarantee that they will get routed in 22 and annihilated in 24. I've never seen anything so dumb in my life. Well, you're forgetting one other part of their political strategy is to fear monger about how the Republican Party is destroying democracy. You know, the very Republican Party that they did nothing about when they were in a position of power to do something about.
So congratulations, uh, that is a losing strategy. We're already seeing that play out in the polls. Look, Democratic primaries really, really matter. And we need to get rid of the corporate Democrats. Uh, they're losers, and the reason why they're losers is because they're beholden to corporate interests. They always have been, they always will be, and it, the party will continue to get worse unless we get real active in the primaries to ensure that we get actual progressives um, you know, elected rather than these corporate Democrats who take corporate PAC money. One, one last thing, Anna. So you're, they're gonna run on Republicans are destroying democracy. I agree, that, that is what Republicans are trying to do. But then you're gonna say, I'm not gonna pass voting rights. The bare, bare, bare minimum that I promised everybody. I'm not gonna do anything about it, but I want you to vote for me to protect you from Republicans destroying democracy. Well, that's what I did last time. And then you laid down like a doormat for them because your donors told you to be a bitch. And so don't pass anything. We want the status quo. And Biden says, yes, sir, yes, sir. Let me see you fight Mansion. Let me see you fight cinema. You'll never do it, Biden, because you're corrupt. You're just like them. You're never gonna fight for your voters. All you're gonna do is send out Begala and a bunch of other people to go tell you yell at your voters and say it's your fault. The elites are great. Good luck with that message. You're gonna get slaughtered politically.